This is the Emergency Medical Minute, sponsored by Mile High Ambulance. Hey, EMM. We are excited to announce that we are now accepting applications for our second annual Diversity and Inclusion Award. The award is eligible to fourth-year med students identifying as underrepresented in medicine and are applying to EM residencies. We are extending three $200 awards to selected individuals following a blinded review of all applications. Applications will be accepted through the end of November with winners being announced mid-December. Check out our website at www.emergencymedicalminute.org slash EDI dash award for all the details and to access the free application. Or you can click on the link in our show notes. Thank you. All right. Well, good morning, everybody. So this is a, a case I had the other day um, for a medical minute, kind of interesting case. I mean, we don't see a ton of, but good to think about. So the case was basically a gentleman in his mid thirties, no real significant medical problems, came in complaining of some left-sided shoulder pain that he said had actually been there for about two weeks. There was also some neck pain with it. He'd actually been seen at a few urgent cares and was seen here once. Uh, looking at his record from when he was here before, they thought it was kind of more musculoskeletal neck pain. Didn't have a workup, was treated just for his symptoms, and then he comes back again. So at least a fourth visit for kind of the same shoulder and neck pain, um, and he looked pretty uncomfortable. You know, he was kind of laying in the bed, all contorted, looking uncomfortable. He was able to move his left arm. The left shoulder didn't look particularly bad, but he did say that the pain was going into the left side of his chest. And on exam, the left side of his chest, like the whole pec area, seemed pretty swollen and hard compared to the right side. So it seemed like something was going on more than just muscle pain. Um, He didn't have any fevers. He didn't have any um, history of drug use or any real interesting history, but, you know, it seemed like something was going on. So we did some workup labs, did show that he was, you know, had a white count, uh, met criteria for severe sepsis, he was tachycardic, and then we CT'd his chest, and he had a lot of inflammation and fluid kind of along the whole left side of his chest and the muscles of the chest down to around the area of the joint between his clavicle and his sternum called his sternoclavicular joint. And, you know, I think what he had was a septic arthritis of the joint, your sternoclavicular joint. And, you know, it's something that is very unusual. I've actually seen a few times now. Um, You know, the joint is, you know, you don't think of it as an orthopedic joint, but it is a joint between your clavicle and your sternum, and any joint can get infected. And septic arthritis of the sternoclavicular joint is very unusual. They say it's about 1% or less of all cases of septic arthritis, but in IV drug users, it's more common. It makes up about 17% of septic arthritis in IV drug users. People who end up having this usually have some kind of either immune suppression. Um, They usually have some reason to be bacteremic like IV drug users. And, you know, they a lot of times it's something that's missed maybe initially because they have just this vague pain in the area where their clavicle meets their sternum. And we don't think about that being something that's infected. Sometimes they can get a little swelling there. So, you know, if we see somebody who seems infected, has pain in that area, it is a thing that can happen. You know, sometimes it gets worked up with either CT or MRI. You can get some fluid out of there potentially to you know, officially diagnose it. Um, the treatment's usually a combination of antibiotics and sometimes surgery washing out that area. Sometimes they have to resect part of the bone there if you don't catch it early enough. So, you know, something to keep in mind. The other thing that's just kind of interesting is in general, when people keep coming back for the same thing, we kind of have to fight the tendency to say, oh, you know, they're here again for this and like back off for a second. And if it's a new issue, it's not something that's like a chronic, chronic, lifelong issue of abdominal pain or something. You know, people keep coming back they're probably here for a reason because it's not getting better. It's getting worse. Sometimes we have to do a little more than we usually would if it was just their first visit and they otherwise look fine. Any questions? All right. Thanks, everybody. We'd like to thank our sponsor, Health One Continental Division and Swedish Medical Center for their financial contributions to the EMM. Donations from them and listeners like you make it possible for us to fulfill our mission of producing and spreading free medical education to the masses. If you enjoy our show, please consider making a one-time or reoccurring donation to help cover our operational costs and keep the EMM awesome. Click on the link in our show notes to make a donation. Thank you for listening.